thank the chairman. I appreciate uh, the chairman's leadership in bringing uh, this bill to the floor today. And I think the American people should be very pleased that this bill is coming to the floor in the form that it is, because we're doing two things here, uh, Mr. Speaker, that I hear about from constituents all the time in terms of the way Congress should work. First, the Dodd-Frank Act was passed eight years ago this July and has been scrutinized by Congresses since that time on how it can be improved. What are the implications of it? What are the unintended consequences of it? And no section of this bill was talked about more than Section 619, the Volcker Act. So we're evaluating it, and we are bringing today a bipartisan solution to something that regulators say is a problem, bankers say is a problem, and our consumers and businesses have had the unintended consequence of being hurt by because it's not allowed our capital markets to function efficiently. So first, Dodd-Frank is subject to review after it, was, after it was passed. That's something our constituents want. We know no law is perfect when it's passed. It's not a piece of the true cross discovered by St. Helena in Jerusalem. It's not part of the Rosetta Stone. It's subject to the scrutiny of these people, our people, the American people. Secondly, people tell me all the time, why can't you be more bipartisan? So, Mr. Speaker, this is People's Exhibit A of bipartisanship. The Financial Choice Act that this House passed last year repealed the Volcker Act. We believe it harms the capital market system of this country. We believe it was an overreaction to the financial crisis. We have members uh, of the Obama administration who said that proprietary trading didn't even contribute to the financial crisis. But set that issue aside. We proposed repeal. Over the United States Senate, they've passed a bill with two-thirds of the Senate, Mr. Speaker, to say that the Volcker Act is not perfect. Section 619 is not right. And they exempt community banks under $10 billion that don't have trading activity. They exempt them completely in the U.S. Senate bill. Passed with two-thirds of the Senate. I think all Americans know two-thirds of the Senate agreeing on something? This is, like, shocking. They can't even agree that there's 24 hours in a day. So this bill represents an improvement. This bill represents bipartisanship. With my friend Dr. Foster, we have worked from the yen of full repeal to the Senate exempt community banks. We have identical language to exempt community banks in this bill, Mr. Speaker. That's why we got a 50 to 0 vote in our committee. It's common sense. But we add one feature that we think improves that Senate language. And that is the heart of what is changed in this bill and the heart of what Dr. Foster worked on, which is how do we harmonize the interpretation of this thousand page complex rule that our Federal Reserve Bank presidents don't understand? Our current chairman said that trading desks had to have a Ouija board to figure out how to do a trade. So, we want a standard, harmonized interpretation of this rule, and that's what Dr. Foster and I propose today. They've tried other ways. We have an interagency working group. They sit around and drink coffee and figure out ways to harmonize stuff, but they failed. Hundreds of questions submitted. How do we interpret this rule? They could come up with 21 answers, Mr. Speaker, out of hundreds submitted. So for that reason, Dr. Foster and I suggest that the Federal Reserve System be first among equals in, a t in interpreting this rule, this complex rule. Why? Because they oversee all the bank holding companies in the country, the most complex institutions in the country. And in my view, that's what we need to do. We're bipartisan. We've compromised. We've brought both sides together. We've improved the bill. I like our chairman. I, I wish it were repealed, but that's not, that's not possible right now. So we take a step forward to make it a better rule that provides more certainty for market makers. And if market makers have more certainty, Mr. Speaker, broker dealers under 10 billion or over 10 billion will have a more clear compliance regime. Our towns and municipalities that require on their municipal bonds having market makers 
and trading, we'll get better prices, which means our water and sewer systems are going to cost less when it comes to the net interest cost. That's what we're trying to do is improve our capital markets, let our companies have more market makers. So I urge my colleagues to support this bill. I thank Mr. Foster for his support, and I thank the chairman for bringing it to the floor, and I yield back.